Okay, this is the follow-up video to the first video I did with regard to this Roden Schwartz FK859 antenna coupler. Uh, this In this video, what we do is we show using an actual transceiver to uh, output some RF to see if the thing will actually tune. Uh, this is, of course, the most important function of all. So the setup is as follows. This, again, is the... Uh, status monitor sort of controller. It's not really a controller. All the controlling guts is in the coupler itself. Um, this uh, is a little watt meter that tells me the power and the SWR between the transceiver and the antenna coupler. And then this is a dummy load watt meter, which comes from the output of the coupler. And let's take a look at the coupler and see what we're talking about here. Okay, walk around, walk around, walk around. Okay, here's the coupler. And um, what, I, what you can see is on, on this side, you can see the uh, RF input here. A little, bit, uh, a little bit bent, but seems to be okay. So this comes from the transceiver. It's the output of the, uh, one of the SWR meters. And then here as the output, high voltage output, I uh, have this little uh, pigtail thing here. Um, the only problem is the ground connection is kind of short, so I had to use a little jumper, and I suspect, I wonder if this jumper is causing me some tuning problems, uh, which you'll see in a bit. So anyway, the output of the coupler here goes here and goes all the way to the dummy load. Now, the good news is it actually looks like this thing is working, uh, with the exception of some higher frequencies, HF frequencies, about 20 meg and above. So let's see how this whole thing actually works. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to try uh, 1.9 megahertz. As you can see, it's in uh, CW mode and 65 watts, but I could easily do 100 watts, uh, which is exactly what um, I'm hoping the system will do for me. So now it's at 125 watts. What I've done here is I've, uh, I use a little, S a little uh, straight key, uh, old World War II straight key. And uh, we'll see all the functions. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the self-test again, as you'll remember from the last video. Uh, in the last video, it alternate between no-go and, uh, and not enough power. So what now I can, what you'll see is with you provide a little power during that function, that section of the self-test, it, it goes to go. So let's just run it. Self-test. Okay, so now you see it's saying not enough power, no go. So now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pr provide it a little power through the key, just a little bit, and there you go. So now we get a go signal, which means everything is a go. Everything is fine. All right, so let's, uh, let's see if we can put some RF in and actually tune this. Uh, I'm hoping you can hear in the background the, the coupler doing its thing, which is very exciting. Here you'll see the absolute output into the antenna, which in this case is a dummy load. And here you'll see the SWR here and the power to the uh, watt meter, uh, to the coupler. So let's see what we got. Let's. Okay, so you see here it says it's tuning. All right, I hope you heard that. So you can see the SWR now, R now is very low, a little over 1.1 to 1. Power output is about 125 watts on the right. Uh, this is the output of the coupler. See, it says about 125 watts. And here it says ready. So when I unkey, when there's no power, it always says low power, always. But now when I key up, it immediately says, says ready every time. And everything's fine. Uh, power is good. SWR is good. It's now, it now has remembered exactly uh, all the L LC combinations. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Now, interestingly, um, what's nice about this setup is um, for frequencies that I've already programmed, let's just take a look at 14 megahertz. Remember, this is a dummy load, so we don't have to worry too much. Uh, I'm gonna key this up and let's, let's watch this. It, oh, see? instantaneously almost instantaneously very very quickly it found it, it remembered it remembered the match and it tuned so we can go to let's say uh, seven megahertz
and we'll do the same thing here. See if you can get, see, instantly ready, instantly ready here. And uh, again, a good less than 1.5, etc. Everything looks good. So it, the nice thing about this is even when it loses power, it must have a non-volatile RAM or something inside of it. Uh, and even when it loses power, it still remembers all these frequencies. Let's try, um, let's go to 80 meters, 3500. Zero, zero. And we'll try to do the same thing here. And that's it. And once it remembers, there's no, you literally just key up. You just key up and uh, it's good to go. Very, very simple to use. Now, let's take a look at one of some of the higher frequencies where it does seem to have problems. Let's try 21 megahertz. And let's see what this will do here. Uh, now, see... Uh, so what happened is it didn't like that frequency for some reason and went into self-test mode. It does not seem to like these frequencies. Now, it's very hard to get it to forget <laughs> that it doesn't like these frequencies. I'm not exactly sure what to do. Maybe you have to change the impedance or something. Um, but uh, 22, let's try 21. Let's try 21. 5. Might be far enough away to, to cause a new, a new function. Let's see. Okay, so it's going to try to tune. You see the tuning light? No. Didn't like it, and then it goes back into self-test mode. If you know, it, it might not have noticed, but this temperature light went on very briefly during, uh, during that. Um, I don't know. what I, I think I have to look that up. I think that just means general, uh, no, no, no solution found. Uh, let's try... Two five hundred and see what happens here. Yeah, can you see the T temperature? Yeah, I'm holding down the key. Yep. So something about these higher frequencies it does not like. We'll do one more. We'll do one more test here. Let's go to twenty eight. Let's see what happens. Right, it's in tuning mode. This might tune. Yeah, this actually found a solution. It says ready. Found a solution, and you can see low SWR, virtually nothing. Uh, so I was 28 megahertz was able to find find a match for. Yeah, that's great. No more noise. Uh, let's try 29 megahertz, see what happens. 29, 1, 2, 3, enter. And you'll also remember I'm doing this at 125 watts. Uh, the, cup, the coupler itself has a dummy load in it that it dumps extra power into. So you don't really have to worry. You know, it automatically uses an attenuator internally, essentially. Let's try 29 megahertz. All right, it says it's tuning. No, did not find a solution. So I do have to find a little, figure out a little bit about this. I do wonder, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, if the problem could be th this length, this length of alligator clips that I was using to uh, ground the... Uh, this part here. I'm not sure, but it seems plausible. All right, let's see. What else do I want to show? And then we can be done with this video. Um, oh, yeah. The only thing I want to show is the function of this narrow and broadband uh, switch here. As I predicted, narrow band seems to always keep the L's and C's uh, in place and broadband drops them out to bypass. So when you want to try to receive, uh, you know, you don't have to keep tuning the coupler to receive. You can just scan around, which is a very useful feature. So let's put this back to just say, uh, you know, uh, 14 megahertz. And um, I'm going to, I hope you can hear, but when I go into narrow band, it'll tune very, very quickly. 
Okay, it's ready on the left and low SWR. And when I unkey, okay, I'm keying, you can hear there's not, the coupler's not doing anything. However, if I now put it in broadband, the coupler, you will hear the coupler uh, every time I key. hear it and the reason for that is because once you unkey it's got to it's got to bypass all of the tuning elements okay and then again I go into narrow band you'll hear the noise once and then it won't happen again See? So uh, it generally works well. I have to do a little more uh, experimentation on the, you know, 20 to 28 megahertz range. Uh, but the, the darn thing seems to do work as function. I love the fact that it remembers the, uh, the combination of tuning elements, even when the power has been shut off for a while. Uh, that's really great. That means every time you go to the shack and operate, once you've tuned up the entire HF band on your particular antenna, uh, it's just, just going to work. The other only other thing here that I that I want to mention is this antenna one and antenna two. I haven't really been able to do much with this yet, but I suspect that the that this is two sets of memories in the coupler, meaning that you could have some kind of external RF relay to connect the coupler to one antenna or another antenna, and that the system will remember a separate set of LC elements for antenna one and for antenna two, but still use the same coupler. I suspect that's what it is. I've seen some more modern commercial like MFJ, ham type stuff that has separate sets of memories for different antennas just for that reason. I suspect somehow that's it, but I really have no further evidence to support that. All right. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, very excited that this coupler generally seems to be working. So long.